will be protected by God. And welcome back to Atreyu News. It is now very, very early Monday morning, September the 25th of 2017. As we've seen the momentum in Europe shift, so we see it shift once again. Tonight, even though the far-right party in Germany is only four years old, it come in third place. Gigantic victory for them. Merkel victory marred by the rise of Germany's far-right party. Angela, the piece of garbage globalist open border, Merkel, secured her fourth term as German Chancellor, but her victory was marred by a huge fall in her party's vote and the astounding rise of an extreme right-wing party whose nationalistic members have vowed to hunt Mrs. Merkel in Parliament. The victory of Ms. Merkel and her center-right Christian Democratic Union, also known as the CDU, allows her to retain her status as Europe's emperor or most powerful leader, and in the era of Donald Trump and Brexit, ensures she remains the symbol of stability and liberal Western values in a globally fractured political landscape. There is no doubt she will continue to preach the virtues of free trade, the Paris climate change deal, and Germans' ability to treat migrants as equal productive citizens. Well, that's pretty much against what we stand for. Almost every single thing. But opinion. Merkel faces toughest coalition negotiation yet. AFD presents an extraordinary challenge for Germany. Mrs. Merkel said Sunday night, we need to listen to their votes. In other words, the AFD, the four-year-old far-right nationalistic party, is now officially in Parliament. The AFD was born only four years ago and saw its popularity surge during the 2015-16 refugee crisis as Mrs. Merkel opened Germany's borders to more than one million refugees it's actually 6 million by my uh, calculation, mostly from Syria and Afghanistan. It will become the first far-right party to sit in the Bundestag since 1960, which is their parliament. Christian Odenhall, chief economist in Berlin for the Center for European Reform, said Mrs. Merkel will have to spend more political capital on domestic affairs. Now that the AFD's popularity has climbed at the CDU's expense, he estimates that the AFD grabbed 1 million votes from the CDU. The election results probably means the reform of the European Union and the Eurozone, an idea cherished by new French president, the other globalist, Emmanuel Macron, Mrs. Merkel's closest EU ally, or butt buddy, will be delayed as migration and refugee issues take on more prominence and Bundestag debates. As the final polls were being tallied, the CDU and its Bavarian sister party, the Christian Social Union, also known as the CSU, were embarrassing, embarrassingly short of the 41.5% of the vote they scored in 2013 federal election, as Mrs. Merkel's appeal was dented by her own bland, play-it-safe campaign and the rise of the ADF, or AFD rather. The big winner of the night was the AFD. When the first exit polls were published shortly after 6 p.m., the AFD party members at the traffic club in Berlin erupted in shouts of joy and clapping, and some sang the German national anthem as protesters outside called the AFD fascists. So they didn't even win and they got protesters. <laughs> I do like the shift of momentum. We have arrived. Alice Weedle, the openly gay AFD co-leader and former investment banker, told party supporters the AFD opposes gay marriage. Her high-profile AFD colleague, Alexander Galland, told the crowd that the government was to buckle up, we will hunt them, we will hunt Mrs. Merkel, and we will reclaim our country and our people. Now that's the kind of language that wins wars. Let's take a look at a little clip from the AFD celebrating their massive victory.
Meine Damen und Herren, ich denke, das ist ein Abend zum Jubeln. Wir sind in den westdeutschen Parlamenten. Wir sind die gesamte deutsche Partei, von der wir immer gesprochen haben. Das haben die Bürger bewiesen und noch viel besser. Dieser Abend, meine Damen und Herren, ist ein guter Tag für die Demokratie in Deutschland. Wir haben in allen drei Ländern Steigerungen bei der Wahlbeteiligung auf bis zu über 70 Prozent in Rheinland-Pfalz. Und das haben wir der AfD zu verdanken. Es waren auch viele Wähler der etablierten Parteien dabei, die endgültig die Hoffnung darauf verloren haben, dass gerade SPD und CDU es überhaupt noch schaffen, den Bürger ernst zu nehmen. So lassen sich auch die dramatischen Verluste für die CDU und für die SPD und natürlich auch für die Grünen außerhalb Baden-Württembergs erklären. Now let's take a look at this chain reaction, the change of momentum and the redistribution of power from the left to the right, all the way from Brexit to Trump and through Europe. Let's take a look back on what happened even in the last year and a half, two years. First, Brexit, June 24th of 2016. Yeah, that is now statistically, mathematically there that the Leave campaign have won. And of course, how could we forget the historic day, the day that will be remembered for a thousand years, November 8th, the day the world officially pivoted against globalism to save itself from the demons that control the world. The Republicans have not had this much power since the early 1900s, majority in the Senate, Congress, the presidency, the governors, and now the Supreme Court. ...to make this decision now. The Fox News decision desk has called Pennsylvania for Donald Trump. This means that Donald Trump will be the 45th president of the United States, winning the most unreal, surreal <laughs> election we have ever seen. This candidacy starting on an escalator ride one year ago and going down against 16 Republican candidates. What started off as unlikely, impossible, is now reality. He said he was always a winner. This did not come without controversy. The billionaire, entrepreneur, TV reality star has defeated the candidate once figured to be undefeatable. Now we have the Italian referendum, which took place on December 4th of 2016, to vote against the EU, to vote against giving the EU as much power as it deems worthy. It was a vote against globalism. Italian Prime Minister Matteo Renzi announced that he would resign after exit polls showed him losing a referendum on constitutional reform by a wide margin. If confirmed, the result of the vote would represent a fresh blow to the European Union, which is struggling to overcome an array of crises, and was eager for Renzi to continue his reform drive in the Eurozone's heavily indebted third largest economy. The 41-year-old Renzi took office in 2014, promising to shake up hidebound Italy and presenting himself as an anti-establishment, quote, demolition man. Sunday's referendum, designed to hasten the legislative process by reducing the powers of the Upper House Senate and regional authorities, was to have been his crowning achievement. Then, March 14th of 2017, the far-right party, led by Gert Wilder, come in an astounding second place. Although he didn't win, we can see how the momentum is definitely shifting. The Dutch Electoral Council has announced the official results of the 
parliamentary elections, which turned out to be very close to the preliminary polling predictions and confirmed the victory of the Netherlands' ruling People's Party for Freedom and Democracy. The VVD, the party of the Dutch Prime Minister Mark Root, secured an electoral victory by gaining 33 seats in the Dutch Parliament's lower house of the 150 and becoming the largest parliamentary faction, according to the data presented by the Dutch Electoral Council. However, it lost eight seats in comparison to the previous elections. Its closest rival, Gert Wilders, who actually was a comedian before he turned nationalist politician, far-right populist party for freedom, also known as the PVV, came second by securing 20 seats in the House of Representatives. Even second place can be regarded as a relative electoral success for the party, as it got eight more seats than last time. Then on April 23rd of 2017, we had the French election, with the quote-unquote far-right leader, Marine Le Pen, who, well, although she lost, gained a ton of support from her predecessor, her father, when he tried to run as a far-right candidate. Le Pen, who is 48, declared she was now the main opposition in France and called on patriots to join her and the FN, or the Front National, in a renewed effort to fight globalists, suggesting she sees no sign of the populist wave cresting. Her performance marked the transformation of an anti-European Union anti-immigration party, party widely viewed as racist, xenophobic, and anti-Muslim. Le Pen's tally was almost double the score that her father, Jean-Marie, the last far-right candidate to make the presidential runoff, achieved in 2002. His surge led to violent protest, but there has been no such sentiment after Sunday's poll, and while Macron defeated Le Pen in every age group, she achieved higher support among younger voters, according to early analysis of voting by polling group Lipsis. So, as we see from studying the past once again, we can predict the future and where this is heading. The momentum is ours. The power is ours. God is with us and we have the moral high ground. There's definitely a reason that the globalists have put all their efforts into extreme hyperinflation and hyperdrive to bring about the destruction of the West ASAP because they know what's coming for them. We, the people, are. Ah, this is not the end. Uh, it is not even the beginning of the end. Uh, but it is perhaps the end of the beginning. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender.